Hi children, welcome to our class. We have seen last video that life history of silk moth. Now we are see, going to see how the silk worm is reared for getting that silk. We have seen that sericulture, it is the rearing of silk, for, silk worm for getting silk fiber, isn't it? So now we can see how the silk worms are reared for getting that silk. So moving on to our topic. Rearing silkworm. So, in that life history, we have seen that it is the female silk moth lays hundreds of eggs at a time, isn't it? So, the female silk moth lays egg, eggs at a time, more than hundreds will be uh, uh, laid there. And that eggs are then stored on fine strips of cloth or paper. These eggs, after laying the eggs, that eggs are stored there on fine strips of paper or cloth. And these fine strips are sold to uh, silk farmers. So, uh, that uh, silk, female silk moth lays eggs and at a time more than 100 eggs are laying there and that eggs are stored there in fine strips of paper or cloth and that is handed over or sold to silk farmers. Okay, farmers normally keeping these uh, silk uh, worm eggs, this uh, eggs are kept under hygienic conditions and under suitable conditions of temperature and humidity for hatching the eggs under hygienic conditions are uh, should be the under hygienic conditions under hygienic conditions under hygienic conditions of uh, pressure, uh, temperature and humidity, temperature and humidity. So, when this uh, for the eggs to hatch and uh, uh, to convert it into a caterpillar or silk worms, that egg should be kept under hygienic conditions and under suitable temperature and humidity should be maintained there. And then these eggs are warmed to a suitable temperature or for the larvae to hatch. For hatching the larvae, uh, for hatching the eggs to larvae, suitable temperature is required. For that we are warming it uh, to a suitable temperature for the eggs to hatch. And uh, then after hatching that caterpillar will be, uh, will be uh, coming out that a silk worm or caterpillar will be coming eggs. So, eggs are kept under hygienic conditions of temperature and humidity and then warmed, warmed the to a particular to a particular temperature for the eggs to hatch for the egg, eggs to hatch. Okay, after hatching, what is happening the, after hatching the eggs, uh, it is converted into that caterpillar. Caterpillar. So, this uh, eggs are hatched to caterpillar or silk worm. Okay. So, after hatching the eggs, we are getting the caterpillar or silk worm. This silk worm then eat mulberry leaves. Eats mulberry leaves.
eats mulberry leaves day and night that after once it is uh, hatched from the eggs uh, that uh, uh, caterpillar comes out from that eggs will eat mulberry leaves day and night every time all the time it will be eating that mulberry leaves the and uh, it will grow in size enormously it will grow because every time it is eating that so it will grow bigger and bigger and within 2 3 days it will uh, after 25 to 30 days it will become very big in size so that much day the only work for them is to eat so after hatching that uh, caterpillar will grow enormously by eating that uh, mulberry leaves normally this is done when that mulberry trees are bearing a fresh crop because that time that uh, uh, leaves are there that leaves uh, this uh, worms can eat that uh, leaves there so normally this is uh, done during that when that mulberry trees are bearing a fresh crop okay so uh, when they eat day and night and they increasing uh, increasingly uh, big uh, grow bigger and bigger they become they become uh, bigger and bigger in size and uh, these larvae are kept there uh, in a clean bamboo trays normally that uh, silk farmers are keeping this uh, larvae in clean bamboo trays and uh, we, uh, they will be providing the chopped leaves there and uh, for 25 to 30 days they will eat day and night they will completely eat and after this 25 to 30 days they will stop eating and they will start to uh, make a net for holding itself and for that twigs or uh, pieces of wood everything will be or uh, small racks will be provided there. small twigs in that uh, wood and bamboo tray that uh, twigs or racks will be provided there and they will move to that corner and they will start weaving a net by uh, to hold itself by producing that protein from the head by swinging the head side to side in the figure of 8. So, uh, that the, during that time protein will come out and it will become hard when exposure to uh, air and it will form into a cocoon, outer coating which is known as cocoon. So, after that uh, its mulberry leaves grow in size. and then stops eating after stopping goes into goes into pupa stage okay so in that pupa stage what is happening it will in that pupa stage it will make cocoon makes cocoon okay and uh, inside the cocoon further development of the silk worms will be taking place so once if the cocoons are made there inside the cocoon further development of the silk worms are taking place and finally that silk worm is growing into a silk moth and this uh, cocoons uh, after breaking the cocoons they will escape out as silk moth okay this is how the farmers are rearing that silk worms for getting the silk fibers okay once again female silk moth lays female silk moth lays hundreds of eggs at a time and that uh, eggs are handed over to in that uh, that is stored there in uh, fine strips of paper or cloth and that strips are given to handed over sold to that silk worm farmers and that eggs are kept under hygienic uh, conditions under suitable temperature and uh, humidity that uh, uh, eggs are warmed 
to a particular temperature so that uh, eggs will hatch there and uh, uh, larvae will be produced. That once uh, after hatching caterpillar or silk worm will be coming out from it and they will start growing by eating mulberry leaves. They will start growing enormously by eating that mulberry leaves and after 25 to 30 days we can see that after 25 to within 25 to 30 days in between these days they stop eating and then goes into the pupa state by making the cocoons and inside that cocoon the further development of the silk moth is taking place right hope you understood that rearing of silk moth now we can see how the silk uh, uh, is uh, collected, silk fibers are collected and how do that processing of silk is done. Now we can see a pile of cocoon is used for obtaining the silk fibers. Not a single cocoon, a pile of cocoons are collected there to uh, make that fibers, to collect the silk fibers. And the cocoons are kept under the sun or boiled to a particular temperature. Inside you know inside that cocoon there will be this caterpillar or growing moth will be there, isn't it? So we are taking that only that outer covering and we also want that without any breakage of that fibers. A single fiber we should get a, a long single fiber. So, we are uh, exposing that cocoon to sunlight or exposing it to steam or boiling it in water. Okay. At that time, the silk uh, fibers are separate out. When we boil or uh, expose to steam or sunlight, the silk uh, fibers are separate out and this process of taking out that threads from the cocoon, that separation of threads, uh, cocoon threads, that processing of uh, taking out threads from the cocoon for use as silk fiber is known as reeling the silk. Okay, we can see reeling silk. Reeling silk is the uh, separation of the silk fibers from the cocoon to use it as silk fibers. Okay. Right. Now once again we can see uh, for getting the silk fibers, silk worms are reared there and the rearing of silk worms or obtaining silk is known as sericulture. And you know it is the female silk moth lays eggs there. And that laid eggs keep stored in a piece of or strip, uh, strips of cloth or paper there. And that paper or cloth will be sold to the silk farmers. And that silk farmers are keeping them under suitable conditions, uh, hygienic conditions and also under suitable conditions of temperature and uh, humidity. The eggs are warmed to a particular temperature for the larvae to hatch. After hatching the caterpillar comes out and this normally done when the mulberry, leaf, mulberry trees are bearing a fresh crop and after that this uh, uh, caterpillar start eating day and night for 25 to 30 days it will start eating that mulberry leaves and grow in size. Once the growth is over it will stop eating and will go into the pupa state. For that it will weave a net to hold itself and that covering is known as cocoon. Inside the cocoon further development of the silk moth is taking place. Okay. So once if the uh, cocoons are collected, a pile of cocoons are collected to get the silk moth and that uh, cocoons are exposed to sunlight or exposed to steam or boiled. During that time, silk fibers are separate out. The process of separating out silk fibers from the cocoon to use it as silk fibers are known as reeling the silk. These are the different uh, stages of rearing, after rearing, different uh, 
techniques uh, different stages are there for collecting that silk fibers once the fibers are obtained the this is role to you get the yarn and the yarns are used uh, for weaving or knitting the fabrics i hope this much is clear to you that's the end of the chapter thank you